Digimon Adventure 3 Determination Review. So, what are my thoughts on Digimon Adventure 3 Determination? Now, I'm going to do doing all five episodes in one, and I just want to say I fucking love this thing. I love it. It was amazing. Now, I will say right now, I don't like Mimi. I had never liked Mimi ever since the original series. And I did rewatch it. I skipped around a bit, but I did pretty much rewatch most of it in Japanese. I did skip some episodes, but. And I skipped a lot of the Mimi one, but Mimi was a little bit better, not by much. I still don't like Mimi. But this special made me care at certain point. I liked her more prior, like in the part when she was being, like, made fun of and it's kind of tapped a bit. I liked that more. That version of Mimi more, but like the more just pressed, like, I thought that was just better. But whatever. Now, in my opinion, the best part of this was Joe. Joe and Gonamon made this movie. This was great. So for a lot of it, Joe is questioning, why them? Which, it's a good question, because throughout the entire franchise, all you really get is, we're a dizzy deskin, therefore this is our job. I never understood that. Like, they just accept it. Like, they always have done that. They've been like, we need to do this. Joe sits down, he's like, why? Why us? Why only us? Why only we have to fight this? And well, they explained it in this. Well, Joe at least gets his answer, which is, they have these 50 monitor friends, and they have, and their partners, and it's their job. So the reason Joe and Gondelmon and Gotham and Gothamon were put together on a team. There's a reason those two were put together. There's a reason his partner was who they were. And Kari said it, and Joe, you know, helped them in the end fighting the main villain, where Gothamon, Gomon, whatever, I, I'm tired, guy, but he helped him the Digivolve into, into, um, into a Digimon that I believe it named Freakamon. I believe, I, I'm gonna have to go back and check, but it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm tired. And that's actually like 12 o'clock. But the point is, is that, the, Joe and Nick, and Joe and Mimi, they, uh, also, uh, Palmon, uh, finally did evolve into Rogemon, who I actually knew about. I knew about Rogemon thanks to Data Squad. I knew Rogemon was a thing. So I actually knew about something in the theory that I'm not a complete idiot. Normally I am, and I don't really know what I'm talking about. That's the reason Nick reviews that have my substance to it. But, um, Mai, Mai gets a lot of development with her friendship with Mimi and that They really show up with her character. Very shy, kind of what we saw in the third one. They also hint at, uh, the Kari and TK romance, which... In my live reaction, I say, I'm all for Bakari and DK Romance. I'm all for that shit. I love that. I did day one and did like Kari and TK. There are so many reasons I could go into it why Kari and TK need to happen. So many. Honestly, it's time to, uh, if it doesn't happen, I really don't care. Because at this point, they're probably gonna retcon the ending. But we do get confirmation that the guy that was really resembling the Digimon Emperor from the trailer, it's of course Ken Ichimoji, or Ken. It is Ken from the season 2 cat. Now, this was something I had a bit of a problem with, because when this reveal was done, we didn't get much of the reaction at TK and Kari. Like, TK and Kari are really close friends with the season 2 cat. People seem to forget about that. Yes, they're obviously closer with the season 1 cat. And the season one cats are also with a character to this. But the season two cats, they're close with them. So I feel like TK and Kari should have had more of a reaction. Kari was just putting her hand over her mouth in shock, and TK was just like, what, what's going on? I'm like, should Kari should be crying, and TK should be angry or something. I mean, really, and Imperial German, don't you need David to make Imperial German? I mean, it doesn't mean being a noob, but as far as I know, don't you need David for that? I could be wrong. But another thing I want to talk about is this, this other thing in this thing, specifically being the bathhouse thing. Now, of course, there wasn't too much fan service. There actually wasn't any fan service in terms of 
you know, but female bodies are what's anything like that. But there were some great moments in the bath now. My favorite would actually be when Picomon, I think her name, I think Brazilian name it, and uh, Biomon disappeared. I think it was Biomon, uh, and Palmon disappeared. And you had Sora and all the girls running around looking, and they look all of the girls' side of the hot spring, and then they're like, shit. So they actually go in to the boy's side of the hot spring. All the guys are just like, what the fuck are these girls doing? They go in and just start looking. And mind you, they're like looking around in the in the opposite section side of the bathhouse. Like, this is kind of freaking creepy for the guy. So, Ty eventually walked out after they found their partner and it's like, what are you doing here? They all stop ignoring it. They're paying attention to your partner. Ty's like, what the hell are you doing here? Get out. He leaves. But at one point while they're looking, Kari slips. Her foot gets stuck in like a, a, a basket, I guess, or a, a bucket. That's the word, a bucket. Her foot gets stuck in a bucket. She goes flying. TK, who is naked. Now, you don't see it, but he is naked. Catches her. And you went to a great little thing where it's just like, um, dang. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's really great. You see them for both blessing. It's, it, it's well done. It's, you can tell what Toei is going for with it, of course. It's actually the board of TK Kari romance. I mean, that, that, that's been there all the time. Like, it just, I feel like the romance between TK and Kari is more prominent. The reason you see it more now is because they're older. Like, there was something there when they were kids, but you could never really tell if there was anything more than just, oh, we're really good friends and we're kids, so we're really bad at kid dang it. Or there was something more. There was some hit that in the season two, but then of course it didn't happen with they came out and said it. That it confirmed. Don't argue with me on that. I cannot link it, but I know it was said in the interview somewhere. But because of course because of this, people are really let down and you know, so of course now they're pushing it and they're like people want TK and Kari, we're gonna give them TK and Kari. Apparently people want TK and Kari together. I didn't know about this because I'm a stupid ass director and work for Toei Animation. But I mean, this was really good. There were some other great scenes. There was a couple great Ty and Matt scenes. One of them is when you're going up into the battle, and Ty and, and they give him the ride, and somebody asked, you two came together, and they both scuff and look away. So great. But, speaking of the battle, I do want to talk about the fight with Ogremon. The fight with Ogremon was well done, but I didn't really see why Mimi didn't just have... Palmon did evolve into Lilymon. I didn't really understand why they did did evolve into Lilymon and take him out. They could have. I mean, I get the reason would be Mimi, Mimi, and she friend her Ogremon, her friend. But goddamn woman, he's the enemy. But whatever. Uh, so they hold him off. They knock a helicopter down. The helicopter new reporter blamed it on Palmon or Tokemon. I'm saying fuck you, bitch, because. Palmon just stayed, was fighting to save your ass. You're the retard that got too close to that battle. Like, oh, there's a giant battle. There's going two monsters going on. Let's go closer to it. It's like, goddamn, what the hell is it? Man of Steel? Like, seriously. Well, it's it, 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 it retarded. It, it, it's retarded. But whatever, that bothered me. I do not like that news lady. But there were a lot of great scenes. Another one that I loved was the scene of Mimi and Joe. Outside in the rain. Great. Mimi can plot in how people said she's egocentric, self-centered, and annoying. By the way, Izzy was the one that said it first that she's egocentric. I love that. I mean, the, I, lo I like it because they had that little romance with Izzy and a Mimi building. So having Izzy say she's egocentric was really good. There's even a thing I'm going to talk about later involving Izzy and Mimi. But... The Joe and Mimi are standing there, and they're both just talking out. Joe granting about why he doesn't get why they have to fight, which I already went over. Joe granting about that. I mean, it's just, this is really good shit, guys. There's so much great shit in here. Him and Mimi are pretty much... And he pretty much tells Mimi, yeah, you're annoying, or some Japanese word, but it pretty much means you're annoying and self-centered. But at least you're not a coward like me. That refused to fight in any league. That was great. That was really good. But. 
Another thing I want to talk about, there's so much in this, I can't cover it all. I'm not good at reviewing long things. In case you can't tell from my Boruto review, I really suck at reviewing super long things. But, I try my best. But, what happened here is, I love this, sorry, I love this. So, the one girl, the lady of Mercury Organization, I don't know her name. Digimon is not my thing, alright? I love Digimon, but it's not my forte. So, the woman takes out her phone and takes a picture of Mimi. When she's in the outfit at the, okay, uh, they dance, in the cheerleading out of the dancing. And she takes a picture of me with her leg up. It's like a great view. I, I can stay that from my own personal experience and thoughts. But I was lying, so you know I wasn't thinking, you know, but I didn't say what I was thinking. But, no, but it was a good deal, and he sent it to Izzy. Which is great, because her and me, their teacher, have been having a conversation before about how they need to let these digits and be kids. They need to let them be people. They're still in school, they're still kids, they need to have fun, they, they don't need to be adults yet. And it's great because she sent Izzy the picture. Because he's in the middle of the point of research, and he sent in the picture of Izzy, and she typed it, extremely urgent message, must read or something. He clicked on it, it had no, no content, and it is a picture of Mimi. And Izzy is like, he freaked out, and he gets there instantly, all dressed up, and he sees Mimi, and he just dies. He dies. It is a great scene. But Digimon enter a contest with a creepy costume. Mikomon wins. All the stuff. But let's be honest. After the main villain is defeated, which I talked about way earlier because this review had no context whatsoever. After that, this thing where things get interesting, people. I'm going to quote. The Digimon Emperor, aka Ken, comes out and. Well, no, he doesn't come, he's not kind of, Leomon carried all the Digimon out, and then Mikomon, I think the Digimon's name is my Digimon, shows up and she attacks Leomon all of a sudden, like, a, and she becomes, like, he grows a little bit of wings, and like, this black aura, and she flies through the thing, which was very interesting. Everybody was shocked, and then you see Kari screaming, no, really well done scene, because... There's like silence, and it go black, and you see Kari screaming. It was amazing. When Kari screamed, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what happened? Did somebody die? And he seemed to be injured, but I think he's still alive. But an uh, interesting thing, thing to know here is that my Digivite turned to black when this happened. And you see me come on, I believe in Digimon's name. It, you guys can correct me on the names in the comments section. I'll probably fucking turn up. But she goes into the portal, right? And this blew my mind. It was revealed by the lady that works for the organization with the teacher. Yeah, that, that, that lady. That Mikoma, my partner, is the one causing the disturbances. This is very interesting. And this is some really good stuff. But the last thing I want to talk about is, is that there is a quick brief conversation between Ty and Matt, which is pretty much why did Omnimon or Omegamon huge and break up. And he pretty much said, even when they were fighting together, Ty still had his doubt. Now, I have my own thoughts on this, but I'm not going to talk about it in a video, but I only know about it. I don't think I feel like sharing my thoughts, because they're not really well put together, and I really don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, if I had to rate Digimon Determination, I would give it... You know what, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. I know, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Because the, if you take out all the things with Mimi that bothered me, which was only like a, maybe half of them, it's pretty much perfect. And I will say, animation-wise, it's beautiful. It looks great. Also, I, as a TK and Kari fan, there are a couple moments in there that just made me clap and freak out. And yeah, so guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of Digimon Adventure Determination. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, guys, above all else, have a great day.